Hi all, it's Coeval here. Today I'm proud to present an immense project, my comprehensive book building guide for players of all skill levels who enjoy all time formats. This guide has literally everything, guys. I encourage you all to check out the timestamps in the description or comments to jump around and pause the video at different points so that you can check out all the different books I'll be showing. I do recognize that these books I'll be sharing, they're great foundations and options for you all, whether you're new, intermediate, or advanced, but at the end of the day, you drive the bus. You know, you're the creator, you're the innovator, so definitely experiment, try things out. Before you jump into book building, consider your playing style. So you can try one of the beginner books in this video and discover your style as you go, or if you're more experienced, stay tuned for the intermediate and advanced book sections. To start off, we're going to look at books that fit three different styles of gameplay, balanced, rush, and control. So first off, we have balanced, has offensive and defensive options, can go aggressive or stall if needed. Usually, balanced books are played to stabilize until turn 4, where you can threaten to use powerful spells or minions like Mega Boulder, Dark Matter Bomb, Dark Knight, and the like. Rush, the name of the game here, is to win as quickly as possible, apply constant pressure to your opponent, and rush books typically have little to no defense, so you won't see protection shields, you might not see uh, recovery spells like Drain Bolt, or fusion or things of that nature. On to control. Control books prioritize minion play and trapping, low damage. Usually uh, the strategies in control books, the minions take a few turns to set up and can struggle versus rush books, which are designed to win in the first five, eight, 10 turns. So what makes an effective book? There are four key components. Arcane Gate, a tower, direct damage, and recovery. If sunk with gate available, you don't lose health upon teleporting in, Without gate, you lose about a third of your health, which is absolutely massive against any competent player, pretty much. That's an auto loss. Uh, we'll go through some popular towers, direct damage spells, and recovery spells. Uh, not every single one, but some of the most popular, which will show up on the screen. For towers, uh, we have Sanctuary, Clock Tower, Ice Castle, Floating Castle, Fortress, McCare, and Treehouse. Uh, and for direct damage, you guys can take a look to see what we have on the screen here. Shock Bomb, Ice Bomb, Mega Boulder, Cuckoo Clock, and the like. There's a bunch of direct damage options. For recovery, we have Drain, Blood Bank, Fusion, Protection Shield, and uh, Healing Spores. Once you get through these essentials, you're going to consider Digging Spells, Trapping Spells, Aerials, and Minions. Once again, we'll go through some of the most popular options for each of these categories. Again, not every single spell, but some of the most popular. So for digging spells, you have Pebble, Erosion, Totem, Flash, and Water Ball. Trapping spells, you have Mud, Ice Shield, tree or forest seed, also called tree, and vine bridge. And then aerials, there's a bunch of them, uh, some of the most popular being sky ray, deluge, rain of fire, rain of arrows. And then minions, there's a bunch, so take a look at those on the screen there for you all. Uh, you'll usually want at least one digging spell and trapping spell in your book. What you put in the rest of the slots will depend on your playstyle, okay? There's no perfect or right book, but starting out, it's good to keep things simple. So I'm going to show you guys how to build some beginner zero prestige books to get you started. Understand that you don't need to conform to these particular books. There's a lot of room to be creative on Arcanus. Uh, hopefully some of these books can inspire you. So the beginner zero prestige books for high times, these are going to focus on damage, less on minions. They're easy to use. So here are two foundations for beginner books. We have meta spells such as Flash, Pebble, Mega Boulder, uh, Ice Castle, Drain, Tree, and Protection Shield. Or you can swap out the Ice Castle for a Sanctuary. And I like to bring Ice Shield along with the Sanctuary because it allows you to Sanctuary someone who's flight prodded flying. You go fly next to them and Ice Shield and then stand on that Ice Shield and tower their shields off. With these foundations, you can finish out the book with direct damage, digging spells, trapping spells, aerials, and minions all the stuff that we just talked about, and head back to the section where I showed some of the more popular spells from each of the categories to help you out. Do note that when you're book building, you don't need a spell from every category. The easiest route for most is to add damage, but it depends on what you enjoy. Here are five examples of zero prestige books with the foundation we discussed on the screen. These books are for high times, 30 seconds plus, that can be used on any map. First one here is the foundation and Shock Bomb and Shock Shield. The second book has Frost Shards and Aura for SB or Shock Bomb and SS, which is Shock Shield. The third has Rain of Fire and Rain of Arrows for SB, SS. The fourth has the second foundation with Sanctuary, along with Sky Ray and Pegasus. And the fifth book is Rush Oriented with Shards, Frost Arrow, and two Aerials. If you want to explore beyond these books, here are viable spells that you can use 
to fill out the book beyond its foundation. I'll put the foundations on the screen and also these spells that are great options for you. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for the support. Please drop a subscribe to the channel. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks, guys. All right, on to the first prestige beginner books. These are going to focus more on damage, less on minions, and also be easy to use, just as the zero prestige ones are. The foundation for beginner books, first prestige, is up on the screen. What we did is we took out Ice Shield and Ice Castle for Clock Tower and Blast from the Past, or BFTP, a very versatile utility spell. The rest is the same. Going through the four essentials, this foundation has Gate, a tower, Clock Tower, Direct Damage, Mega Boulder, and a Recovery spell, Drain Bolt. So you've got your foundation, look to the other categories. Digging spells, trapping spells, aerials, and minions. Here are five example books uh, with that approach in mind. Go ahead and pause the video to check them all out. And you can use the same spells that I showed in the Beginner Zero Prestige book section to finish out your book. And again, you can rewind the video to check out those spells. Before we move on to some books featuring new spells, if you want to give the Elementals mode a shot, or perhaps you don't even know what Elementals it is, you have no idea what I'm talking about, Check out my complete Elementals Teams guide that covers every spell book in detail. Click the card in the top right. Thanks. Alright, on to new books. Here are five books featuring a couple of new spells. A few are generic, some are better on certain maps. Uh, by generic I mean they can be played on all maps. And some are better on certain maps which I'll put on the screen along with the difficulty and also playing style. Uh, the first book featuring Dark Matter Bomb or DMB is High Times Generic Rush. Can be used on all maps. The second book with Gargoyle is a high times book. It's best on grassy or maps with a lot of land like Elven Isles where you can dig to create space for your minions using Totem. The third book is for low times, generic with Breeze, which is best on open maps like Grassy and Kano to take advantage of the Breeze spell, otherwise it's a dead slot. And the fourth book is a low times flightless book with Javelin and Prickly Barrier, pretty balanced. And the fifth book is a low times flight book with Phantom. Okay, on to intermediate and advanced HTS books. HTS is high time standard and LTS is low time standard. So most of these books can be played on all maps, but I'll put map icons, as I said, next to the preferred maps for ones that are a bit more niche. Uh, this list has some generic mixes, a couple of rush books, and even Storm Dragon. Feel free to pause the video and give one of these a shot uh, in game. Hope this helps you guys. Moving on to advanced HTS. Here are examples of a few books you can try out. These books are best on Grassy Hills, which is a high time set played by many veterans historically, and uh, relatively unexplored on other maps, especially the ones with new spells. At least I haven't tried many of them on other maps, but they may be viable. You can experiment more with the map with the first three books, since they have flight and mobility is much easier. Um, a lot of maps differ in how easy they are to traverse with the different amounts of terrain that they have. And if you'd like to make your own advanced book, here is an advanced foundation which I'll put up on the screen. You might notice that this book does not have Dark Knight. Uh, the reason behind No Dark Knight, or DK as I might call it, is because although it can catch opponents off guard, and do high damage, it's often not needed in high level play. Veterans know how to play around Dark Knight, they can rely on chip damage instead of the DK threat, and DK is also quite easy to trap after a charge, at which point most veterans can stall the game out. Go ahead and pause the video to check out different spells that you can add in for the final two slots. Here's some original spells that you can try out on the screen, including but not limited to Death Bomb, Trolls, Dwarf, Portal, and Arcane Egg. And we also have some new spells, which will come up here on the screen. Monarchs, Sun, Pinecone, Breeze, and a few other options. Moving on to Intermediate Low Time Standard, or LTS, I've got five books for you all. Most of these are playable on all maps. While a couple are map specific, again, I encourage you to pause the video to check these out and take a closer look. Next up, we have Advanced LTS. Basically, my criteria for Advanced is if the book has Swarm, it's Advanced. That's because it's difficult to move around minions, or micro them as it's called, in low times. Uh, here are five advanced books to try out in low times, along with the map they're best with. If you'd just like to make your own books, then here's an LTS Flightless Foundation. As for a Flight Foundation, just start out with the generic portal book I showed earlier. This Flightless Foundation has Pebble, Mud, Mega, Aura, Drain, Sanctuary, Clock Tower, and Glide. Uh, you can also swap out glide for another mobility spell, such as leap. Here are some viable spells to add to your low times flightless foundation. Um, we'll start by showing you the original spells on the screen. Check some of these out. There's portal, egg, flash, deluge, hydration, water ball, lots of cool options there. Here are some reliable new spells. Again, pause to check them all out. Many of these new spells are aggro, like pinecone, dark matter bomb, bloodlust, whisper arrow, and the like. 
So, before we move on to full books, if you haven't seen my new player's guide, please give it a watch, guys. It's a great resource if you're a new player. Go check it out in the card in the top right corner. Now it's time for full books. We're going to start with Arcane, Fire, and Stone. There are two spell books each for Arcane and Fire. I will say full books are a great way to learn individual spells and overall strategy. Personally, I'd recommend running them early to help improve your understanding of the game. The next slide here is Storm, Frost, Underdark, and Overlight. There's two books for Storm here at the start. You'll notice a couple of these don't have Gate. That is possible, although a little bit risky. You're going to want Glide or potentially run a map that you're not going to get knocked off on turn one. Next we have Nature, Seas, Cogs, Seasons, and Illusion. Check out that Cogs book again, no Gate. Very interesting. The reason for that is basically Cog's Familiar gives extra time, right? And so you won't have to worry about your opponent knocking you unless they get you on turn one. And finally we have Blood, Druidism, Cosmos, and the best book, Holiday, with Blood having two different books available there. If you've enjoyed this content so far, please subscribe to my channel. As you might be able to tell, a lot of work went into this guide, and guess what? We're not done. Also leave a comment and let me know what spellbook you're eager to try so far. Alright, uh, we're moving on to some general tips for book building, uh, 8 to be exact. When building books, generally have something you can do defensively, for example stall or bring out minions, and offensively, like damage or trapping. So if you're up 100 health, uh, what's your offensive plan? Do you have ice bomb to rush? Do you have a mega boulder? Do you have frost shards? How are you going to push that advantage? If you're down 100 health, what's your defensive plan? Do you have methods that you can stall? Do you have healing? Do you have uh, sustain, like protection shields that you can build up? Where can you hide? Things like that. On to the next tip, have an overall strategy, long term or short term. You could rush down your opponent in the first 10 turns and basically focus not at all on healing. You could stall until the Armageddon. There's potent Armageddons like Fisher, Kano, Elvin has Comet. You could stall until the Arma and just rely on the Arma to get you the win. Another strategy might be you could keep the opponent trapped and win with Dark Knight, for example. Third tip is know your win conditions. These are spells that will win you the majority of your games. These aren't necessarily the highest damage spells, that's a common misconception. For example, win conditions include Swarm, Dark Knight, Mega Boulder, uh, Imps, and Ice Bomb. Next, think about tools you can use to handle or counter popular meta spells, or a spell that you know your opponent loves. For example, if you know that your opponent likes to bring Flash, which is just so popular, you could maybe bring Glide. Let's say that your opponent brings Pegasus. You could bring Snowball to counter that, right? Snowball can often do the full 100 damage to just one shot of Pegasus, if not do like 95 and get the Pegasus down to lethal. Um, if your opponent loves Dark Knight, you could bring a Mega Boulder. That way you could Mega Stuff if they trap you with it, or you could lob a soft Mega and kill the Dark Knight on summon if they allow you to. Forest Seed, for example, is a popular spell that a lot of people like to bring. Uh, one way to easily escape that is to bring Arcane Flash. Next, consider the map. Is it more open? Then bring some aerials, bring some rush spells, get some damage in there. Does it have a lot of land? Then bring some defensive spells, okay? Have a way to gain tempo while stalling, which could be Arcane Egg, which gains 10 health per turn, or maybe Imps and Arcane Arrows that you can build while you're hiding away in your hole far away from your opponent. Do you have protection shields that you can build, whether you're flightless or flighted? Um, the cap on those is 150, so you can build a big advantage just by being defensive. Also have a way to dig if there's a lot of land, right? Flash, Totem, Pebbles, uh, they're all great options. Next, consider the Arma. Is it destructive or weak? If it's destructive, you won't need much damage, so you could play for late game. If it's weak, you may want a more balanced book. You could still stall on maps like Alien World, for example, that have a weak Arma but a lot of land. Easily escape that is to bring Arcane Flash, but generally you may want a more balanced book if you have a weak Armageddon. Alright, next is uh, run a book that you enjoy. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. It's always more fun that way, right? A lot of figuring out what you enjoy will be figuring out what your playing style is, which will come with time, right? Be patient. And the final tip is pair spells together that have synergy. For example, Flight and Protection Shield, Arcane Arrows, and Imps. Uh, this will bring me to my next section on spell synergy. Uh, some spells in Arcanist have good synergy, meaning they complement each other well. What synergy means is that two spells work well together and complement each other. Also, some minions can use spells that your Arcanist can use. For example, Frost Giant can use Ice Bomb, Mantrap can use Thorn Bomb. But in order to use those spells, the spell has to be in your book. So I have to have Thorn Bomb in my book in order for Mantrap to use it. This is true in standard, but not random spells. So bringing the minion and its corresponding spell would be what I call good synergy. 
I will bring up a slide on the screen to show you guys some examples of good spell synergies. So Flight Prot, Arcane Arrows and Imps, Mud and Mega Boulder, uh, Recall Device and Calling Bell, Paladin and Pegasus, Dark Knight and Pegasus, Man Trap and Vine Bloom, Nature's Wrath and Mac Air, Mac Air and Prot, and finally Dark Matter Bomb and Cosmic Horror. These are not an exhaustive list of all the spell synergies in the game, but some of the ones that you may see the most. All right, that wraps up spell synergies. Next, we're going to look at three examples of spell books on specific maps and walk through the process of making a book on a specific map. How's that work, right? So let's open our 60 Fisher book. So I wanted to talk through my process here. This is a book built for the late game. Uh, Fisher is Goblin Caves, for those who don't know. The goal here is to let the Arma kill the opponent, let your opponent stack a couple of protection shields, and use Entangle to ground them, and that way you're basically stalling until the Arma once you have Entangle up. They can't do anything, they can't gate, they have to figure out how to maybe sink themselves, or damage themselves with a swarm, right, in order to get that Entangle off. Entangle and DK, our Dark Knight, have good synergy early game, right? You could Entangle your opponent and then summon a Dark Knight on their head, they would have to do a Mega Boulder stuff, or just take the charge damage and be down a bunch of health, right? If you can pressure with DK before the Arma starts to delete the map, that's ideal, because you won't have a lot of options or opportunities to use it late game when the Fishers are just going absolutely crazy. In the super late game, you have Ray to knock your opponent into the water, and Arcane Arrows is also an option if you wanted to try that spell out on this map you could potentially take that out for Ray and go for something like this. All right, on to the next book where we're going to talk about building a book for a specific map. I have a 10 Comet book for you guys. This is an interesting book. Uh, with this one, it's best to wait for the Armageddon. Basically, you're going to trap your opponent or cut the map in half with a forest seed. What that means basically is you're going to forest seed the middle of the map so that your opponent can't fly across, assuming they have flight. The general strategy with this book get a blood bank out early, as with all flightless blood bank books, tower up under some cover, uh, summon a drone, micro it to your opponent, move it to your opponent over time, get some chip damage with the drone's star bolt, which is its attack. If your opponent ever teleports low, you have maelstrom, which is lethal. You've got spear for great damage, and also can handle protection shields pretty well, and also sanctuary is good to handle protection shields. You can also toss your spear on the ground, and then pick it back up to get the seven damage boost. Actually, you don't even need to pick it up, you just need to cast it. So basically, in the late game, comets are going to be raining down on your opponent, so it's going to discourage flighted players from advancing to you. And meanwhile, you're chipping away with a drone, they have to play around the comet, and it's low time, so they don't have a lot of time, so it becomes very tricky. Maybe they do a lapse in their positioning, and you're able to get a sanctuary off, and then you have a blood bank out, so you're threatening huge damage, and it becomes overwhelming. On to the next book here, we have a 60 Kano book. So Kano is a destructive arma, and the map is quite open. On Kano, uh, what that means is you don't need to be too aggressive because the arma is so destructive, you can wait for the arma to do work. I still like to run Mega Boulder, I love Mega Boulder, to potentially capitalize on an early uh, misstep in positioning or blunder. Uh, Ray is great because the map is so open, Sanctuary is meant to counter high protection shields, and Ice Shield, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it allows you to Sanctuary shields off from anywhere, you just fly close to your opponent, Ice Shield, and Sanctuary inside, inside the shield. Just make sure you're in range, otherwise you're just going to cry. They're just going to pebble your tower. In this next section, we're going to pick three spells and build a book around each. I know I've seen a lot of new players ask, like, I have a favorite spell, but, you know, how do I build a book around it? What's the process there? Yeah, you can try this out with your favorite spell. I picked three examples. We're going to start with Dark Matter Bomb. This is going to be a low times book, and it is going to be best used on Dark Fortress. Why such a random map, Coeval? Well, that's because I ran this a lot in the last tournament. So we're going to grab Dark Matter Bomb, and it makes me think of Supernova. So I'm going to grab Fusion, which is great recovery, Drone and Cosmic Horror, which are nice for chip damage, and also Cosmic Horror threatens the Dark Matter Bomb lob. And then I see a tower in here that's mobile. That's nice. Let's grab Mac Air. And then obviously Nova, the uh, core to this book. Uh, next thing I know about Mac Air is that in a nice, it's a nice mobile tower, right? and it synergizes well with Protection Shield, so I'll grab that. Before I forget, we'll get our two staples. Arcane Gate is obviously needed, and I like Flash 
to be able to navigate easier with Mac Air. It's difficult to move around in small spaces and the hitbox is kind of strange. So flashing out of something is always nice. So now that we've got all those spells, the next thing I'm thinking about is, okay, we know Mac Air is a 50 health tower. That's pretty weak. I still want some mobility. And so I'm gonna grab flight here and we've got four slots left. So I'm thinking, okay, what are some generic spells and tens that are always helpful pretty much in any situation. Pebble to take a tower out, and then Aura for just the chip damage. Way far away, you don't have to spend seven turns, you know, scurrying all the way across the map, giving your opponent time to respond all the while. Okay, the last two slots are decided basically based on practice and uh, using the spell a lot competitively, kind of grinding out many games over a long period of time. The first one I chose is Water Ball. The reason for this is it's nice to pressure out of mud balls and is a good tempo response. You can get some damage off too. The second one is very niche, uh, Drain Bolt. Seems kind of strange because I already have fusion. There's a lot of redundancy in this book, but it also uh, works quite well in the context of Fortress. I noticed that when I was running this, people use swarms a lot. What do I have in this book to deal with swarm? You know, Grav Pulse? Yeah, that's one option, but if I'm being hugged by the swarm, I can't really do much. So Drain is a great option there, a great alternative. Uh, this book can both rush and do well late game. On Fortress, it's best late game to stall, build your prots. You're going to Nova the player around turn 40 or 50, and then pressure with Dark Matter Bombs after they teleport away. Uh, if you have a chance to push early with DMB, then go for it. Mac Air flies fast. Yes, uh, faster than flight. Alright, on to the next book. We're going to check out Paladin here. So let's get our Paladin. Paladin kind of makes me think of Dark Knight. And when I think of Dark Knight, I think of Generic. What does Generic look like? Well, we're going to go back to our Advanced Foundation, which I have in here. So let's go to Advanced HTS, Foundation. Okay, we're going to fill that out. I need Paladin, obviously. That's my favorite spell. And I've got one more slot. This Advanced Foundation doesn't have Swarm and I'm going to bring Dark Knight. So why did I bring Dark Knight? I know Paladin is similar to Dark Knight, but not that strong. Paladin is pretty ass, right? So the question is, how can you gain an advantage, catch your opponent off guard with Paladin? One strategy is forcing a teleport by trapping your opponent with it, and then you bring out a Dark Knight when your opponent's teleport is down. Okay, the Dark Knight is gonna be the much more threatening win condition. So that's the name of the game with this book. To close out this section, we're gonna check out Frost Shards. And this is going to be a low times book, generic. I see frost shards and I immediately think of rush, but I don't really love playing with comet, so I'm going to grab generic 10 spells. First off, we need gate. I'll grab flash, pebble, mud, mega boulder, flight. I also noticed that when I grab shards, it opens up the availability of the level 2 spell arrow. Great spell, for low times especially. Let's grab that. Then I'm going to need a tower just to be able to break out of mud balls. Now I'm thinking, okay, what synergizes well with flight? Protection shield, that's always great. You cannot run protection shield in some rush books, but this is kind of a eh, hybrid rush, I guess. Eh, it's pretty much rush, but like a rush with flight. Next I'm thinking, okay, water balls, good pressure to break from mud balls and just continue to threaten big damage plays. Uh, Maelstrom is great to catch people off guard, especially on maps where there's a lot of low uh, vulnerable areas. And then um, next I'm thinking about, okay, any aerials? Deluge is great. I could also grab Ray, but I chose Deluge in this instance for some extra damage. For the last two slots, they're pretty flexible. Uh, I went with Blast from the Past and also Whisper Bomb, but you'll notice that I don't have any recovery in this book now, but that's okay. I mean, the mentality of Rush Books is to win early and never be on the back foot, right? So going without Drain makes some sense. Uh, rush Books like this are reliant on getting the first turn so you can get a health advantage from the get-go. And uh, the main role of Blast from the Past is to reposition. So for example, uh, let's say that your opponent is up on the ledge, I'm gonna Blast from the Past them down so that I can set up a nice Mega Boulder, or maybe even Blast from the Past them down low and be able to get a Maelstrom Sink. There are three spell books that kind of give you insight into, you know, how can I build a book around my favorite spell, try it with your favorite spell and let me know how that goes. Uh, in fact, let me know your favorite spell in the comments before we get on to the next section. For the final section of this guide, we are going to look at optimizing your book. So don't leave just yet. One is swap out your least used spells. What this means is, are you going into a game and you didn't use the FTP at all? Might not be the best option for you, maybe you tweak it and add something else. 
are you just not feeling like flight is a great option for you it feels kind of clunky you're not you know used to the movement go ahead and take it out go for a flightless book next thing are you getting rushed down then add some defense or further optimize your own rush maybe you need to try a different rush you know take out frost arrow for ice bomb or take out mega boulder for ice bomb or take out ice bomb for whisper arrow you know experiment with the different damage there's a lot of damage in uh, in arcanus uh, third are you struggling with minions then swap them for some offense you know take out that dk or take out the frost giant take out those ones that require a lot of micro or maybe game knowledge that you may not quite have yet fourth think about what spells you really miss for example you know man I wish I had Sanctuary in that last match. Then bring it. Try it out. Maybe it doesn't work well in your next matchup, but you can at least give it a shot. See if it feels good. Do you get a lot of mileage out of it over time? Maybe not just run it in one game, but try it with five games, ten games, twenty games. Depending on how uh, how much time you have to devote to Arcanist, right? And the last tip is, is a book not working at all? Then just try something different. You know, no sweat, right? There are so many spells and strategies. Just keep experimenting. Alright, that's all for this video. I hope you found this helpful as you get started on Arcanus or look to improve your skills. If you were ever confused throughout this video or have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Any feedback is also very much appreciated. Uh, a lot of work went into this, so I really hope that it is a great, timeless, you know, evergreen resource for new players, beginners, intermediate, advanced, everyone. I may take books from this video in the future and make content on how to win with them. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. Anyway, subscribe for more Arcanist content, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.